All right, today I'm going to be playing another pinball game that was made for DOS. Oh, and also I said a PlayStation release called Extreme Pinball. Now, last time I talked about Epic Pinball and whether more tables in a pinball game would make for a better game. Well, this time around we're going to take a look at four tables. There we go. As I was saying, we're going to be taking a look at four tables this time instead of 13. Just see if that theory of mine really uh, stands out or not. And of course, we're going to take a look at Rock Fantasy first, my favorite of the bunch. I really like how the, uh, if you take a look at the bottom of the screen, the, uh, the scoreboard lights up. I think that's a really in neat design. Now, one thing I will mention in the background, there's background music going on and just like an epic pinball. Except this one feels a little more how you say, uh, like, yeah, we're ready, we're ready. Whereas the first, whereas an epic pinball, it's like, okay, let's get this game going here. Time for us to get started. Oh, and this is kind of like, kind of like the band starting to warm up before the performance. Now the show begins. Now, am I going to be able to cover all four uh, tables? We'll see. Yeah, one way to kick off pinball. Anyways, one thing you notice is that the score is in the thousands only, which I don't quite get. I mean, why would you... I mean, why would you have a score that's just thousands only? I mean, I get it, you're trying to be different. Now, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, the score. Why they were just programmed for thousands only instead of like... Additional pinball scoring is beyond me. Just like any pinball table, don't you just love it when they are? Uh, uh, Ball goes careening off in whatever direction it wants, despite the fact that uh, if you're trying to hit it in a specific spot, well, that's pinball physics for you. But between this and Epic Pinball, I feel like this is the faster of the two games, which means there's less chance of breathing room in comparison to Epic. Jesus Christ. Stupid ball. The only saving grace is that, uh, Rock Again, uh, uh thing on the bottom. Take a vacation. Yeah, I could use one right about now. Oh, that's one thing I forgot to mention is that, uh, unlike Epic Pinball, this game actually changes balls when you complete certain tasks. As I was saying, the ball changes when you complete certain tasks, like, I was saying the ball changes when you complete certain tests, which I think does add a little bit of depth and dimension to the game. I don't like that time I didn't uh, get, get the ball changed from the globe to the record. Oh, there's also the match also, which we didn't get. I felt this was kind of a mediocre run. I'm going to do this one more time. See if I can get more done.
All right, before I shoot the next ball, I want to show you guys something. If you take a look at the uh, manager in the uh, upper left corner, I love that smug. Get back up there. As I was saying, I love the record company manager's face, like, hmm. Like, he knows something's up. Or, like, eh, I'm gonna get these. I'm gonna con these guys. See? I just love that smug look on his face. Wait, this one thing that this table really knows how to do is interrupt you again and again and again. There was something else I was going to discuss. Oh, yes. As I was saying before, when I started, do fewer does, does fewer, having fewer tables that are actually better designed make a better game? Well, between you and me, I would say, for the most part, yes. Because if you have fewer tables that are better designed, it does make for a better product. But that's not entirely true. It's pretty much a crapshoot. Oops, sorry about that language because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't it also just depends on who you're catering to looks like we're not going to the VIP club after all Anyways, moving on to the next table, Urban Chaos. The real saving grace for this table is the bulletproof vest that's at the bottom of the screen. But it doesn't last. This is just not going well for me, and I don't know why. Okay, that time it actually went a lot better. I don't know why. It seems like there's always that one ball that uh takes care of everything for ya. And I just don't know why. Oh, once again, you notice the ball changed from a regular ball to a uh, tire. That's the interesting thing about this game is that only three of the four, as I was saying, three of the four tables allows you to change your ball. As you notice in the Rock Fantasy, you notice that it started off as the world spinning around. As I was saying. As you notice back in the Rock Fantasy table, the ball changed from the globe to a to a record. Now, when you progress in the Rock uh, Fantasy table, the ball does change. It goes from the globe to the 
record to a gold record to a platinum record. So that's what gives this game a little bit more of that, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of, uh, depth. It gives you that sense of, ooh, I just, ooh, it changes to this? Ooh, I wonder if it's gonna change to anything else. You just wanna keep going and going and going until you see where it goes. Kinda like the Enigma table in Epic Pinball. For this one, this one was all right. I guess I'll, uh, I guess this is a keeper. Now we're gonna go to the weirdest table of them all. Monkey Mayhem. Planet of the Apes, eat your heart out. This one, I think, is the hardest of the four tables. Because there's no saving grace in uh, this table. Of course, just like all tables of pinball, there's always objectives to complete. Some easier than others. Like this one right here, I'm doing real well on getting monkey stars to get coins. Try this again. Because I felt like this just wasn't a very good run. Because I mean, I know I could do way better. Of course, interestingly enough, uh, that's how. That's how game. That's how pin, machines like pinball and arcade games made their money, you know? You just have to be persistent. Oh! Speaking of, uh. Well, speaking of pinball tables, I think I read an article once saying that. Pinball tables were actually illegal for a while because, well, kids would cut school and use their lunch money to play games. So I think pinball tables, I think, were banned for like, like, God, I'm just trying to think, thirty some years, I believe. I don't remember the full article, but I do remember reading something about it. And of course, if anyone can verify that, let me know. that have been freed. Huh. Of course, the old uh, cliche of hamster wheels uh, running machinery. Ay, ay, 
Yay, this... Like I said before, I think this is the hardest of the tables, but I think it's also the worst. But not... But not for the right reasons. Well... I think that pretty much sums it up. Whatever. Finally, we're looking into Medieval Knights. Which, from a designer's perspective, I think is the best. Because, I mean, if you just take a look, as it's scrolling right now... Yeah, it doesn't look too difficult. It's... Not too easy. It's just... I think it's just perfectly balanced. Whereas Urban Chaos, I think, had the, uh... If I were to give rewards for what each table deserved, Soundtrack would go to Rock Fantasy for sure. Difficulty goes to Monkey Mayhem. Um, let's see what else. But this one, I think, just wins best overall. And... What would I give Urban Chaos? Probably the most... Cliché or something? Jesus Christ. Although I think at this point I might have to retract what I said about uh, this one being best overall. The way things are going right now. Alright, got Well, that was short-lived. Got to change to a ring. I got the cannon now. Now the ball changes itself to a cannonball, which is kind of nice. Alright, let's do this again, because I felt kind of robbed on this one. You kill a dude and get 500,000 points out of it. Rest in peace, little man. Alright. 
Finally, got one objective completed. Shoot the troll there for five million points. Love it. That, not so. Make a cannon again. Joy. You can tell by the tone of my voice that, uh, this thing is starting to test my patience. Well, I would continue on, but I don't think there's anything else left for me to discuss. Um, although there was a couple things I did want to go back to, um, saying before. So, do these four tables actually surpass the 13 tables of Epic Pinball? Like I said before, on one side of the coin, yes, because these tables were better designed and they have more going on instead of feeling more like a carbon copy of the preceding table. But, that does not necessarily make for a better product. And like I said, I'll be saving that sort of thing for the reviews. I think between this and Epic Pinball, I think the physics were a little bit better in this game than they were in the first game. But of course, nothing can be actual pinball because, well, there's a huge difference between actually hitting the uh, buttons of the flipper with your hands versus hitting the uh, keys of a keyboard. But, I digress. Anyways, um, like I said, there's really not much else for me to talk about, um, so if you tuned in, thanks for listening, and I will see you all next time.